Hi, my name is Trish West, and I am a licensed clinical social worker and a licensed clinical addiction specialist, as well as a certified life coach. And I'm so excited to share with Pearl today. Hello, sunshine. Good to see you again. Had to walk out to let you back in. Stuck in a storm of a relationship. Lost my fire. Hey everybody, my name is Pearl Sharenza and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Pearl. And I'm so excited. As you guys know, I love anything about self-care. I love when we can bring experts in, we discuss self-care and all things around that. And today is no different. Today I have Patricia, also known as Trish Noel. She's a licensed clinical social worker, licensed clinical addiction specialist, an associate certified licensed forensic evaluator in the state of North Carolina, and also a certified life coach who seeks to encourage, inspire, and empower individuals who seek from healing from challenges in their life. Through the use of psychotherapy, she provides practical tools to those on the journey to better health and wellness. Trisha is also the founder and CEO of Noel Integrated Services, NIS, she is, which was established in July of 2020. And NIS provides behavioral health, and addiction counseling to individuals, families, and groups. In July of 2021, NIS birthed Just Breathe, a support group for females ages 12 to 21 that focuses on depression, anxiety, self-harm, and suicidal ideations. Trish is very passionate about this group and desires to meet their needs through support, education, and advocacy, as well as family members. Trish also believes it's okay to not be okay which I'm all for that. And she's willing to walk the journey with them. Trish is originally from Maryland and is the mother of three adult children and is a parent giver. I totally get that as well. She's mm-hmm. a graduate of the University of Maryland School of Social Work, where she received her master's degree in social work and believes everyone should have a voice. And we are excited to hear your voice today. Trish, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I need to make a correction because yes, when we originally met, I was Trish Noel. But I recently got married. Oh, so right. I'm Trish West. Yay. Congratulations. And I, have to, I have to even remember that. Okay, your, no, your last name is Noel, no longer Noel. Your last name is West. So, yeah. So, that's like the so new you're a, thing. You're a newlywed balancing all the new things that come with yes, it. Yes. Yes. So and awesome. if you would have asked me this a year ago, I would have been like, not I. But here I am. Oh, that's awesome. Congra- and how long have you been married now? Um, October the 15th. We just got married. So. Today, actually, he sent me a message that said, happy four-month anniversary. So today Aww. makes me That's yeah. beautiful. Well, we're so excited to have you on the show. And I would love for you to share with everybody a little bit of your story, share your background, how you grew up, and how you went on this journey to become the coach that you are today. Cool. Well, first, thank you again, Pearl. I'm so excited to be here. I had a great time with you before, and this is great. Um, I'm originally from Maryland, like you said earlier. Um, the only girl of three, two older brothers, they were like much older than I am. It's like 15 years older. So I never remember. I kind of grew up as the only child. Um, and then later in life, I just, I've always wanted to go to college. And um, when my dad died when I was 15, it was kind of hard for me to go to college. So I kind of had to stay and help out with my mom. So it was she and I for a long time. And then I got married. You know, life happens. And then life started happening. I would go to school. I had to stop. I would go to school. And then finally, I was just determined, like, I was just going to go to school. And I finished. I always tell people I did the 25-year plan. It, it took, that's about how long it took for me to finish undergrad. And then I was blessed with the opportunity to do grad school. And I moved from Maryland. I'm in North Carolina. Um, life hit me, hit me real hard um, in 2011 with a divorce after being married for 28 years. And at that time with three kids, one in college and two small ones at home. 
and a parent caregiver. So life just, it just slammed me. I was like, now what am I supposed to do? Because forever, you know, I was Trish, somebody's wife. I was Trish, somebody's mother. I was Trish, somebody's, I was always Trish, somebody else. But now I have to figure out who is Trish. So in the midst of the divorce, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. So we had to work through that. And it was just, it seemed like it was just one punch after another, after another. And I was dealing with chronic health issues. And it's just a mass of things happening. And now today, here I am, a newlywed, my own private practice. Um, my kids are now all adults. Everybody is doing well. And for a change, it took me. It took me a long time. I always tell people for the first four years after my divorce, um, I just stayed to myself. I didn't do anything. Um, my kids were like, mom, go out, get caught, go somewhere. And I was like, I just, I fell into this deep depression and I just didn't know who I was. I was like, who am I? So I went to therapy and I just had to find myself. And it took me many years to figure out and like where I am now, I can't say I'm like perfect, but I can say I'm in the best place I've ever been in my life right now. And so when the bumps hit me, I'm able to bounce back a lot quicker than I could have before. So, yeah. Well, I, I love, uh, congratulations on the new marriage and, you. you know, and I, I don't know how, how is your mom today? She's good. She's now a 10 year survivor. She's Yay. doing very well at 87 years old. Still God fighting. bless her. That's awesome. Yeah. So she's doing great. Yeah. And I get what you're talking about. Like, who am I? Right. That's so powerful. Right. That statement It's like, oftentimes we struggle with that. I mean, and you know, you're not alone, but sometimes we feel like we're by ourselves. We feel mm -hmm. like nobody else knows that I can't figure out who I am. Exactly. And, and that's my journey as well. I, I mean, I was a top five mortgage broker in Virginia. I was a top, top female in my company. And we moved down to Florida because I was going to be the stay at home mom. Cause that's what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, I didn't enjoy it. I was yeah. not a PT. I, I was in the PTA, very involved in PTA. However, I didn't like all the drama, the PTA that went with it. I truly didn't know where I was anymore. I was like this right. mom and wife. It was great, but who was I truly? And so I, went on this journey and my, my son in 2015, like you, like it took me many years to figure that out. My oldest went to college in 2015 and I realized I need to figure out who Pearl is. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I realized I never really connected with my younger son because I put so much into what my older son's goals and visions were because he was adopted and he was mixed race. And we wanted to make sure he had the opportunity you know, to get all his goals. And I took advantage of the fact that Nate was very self-doer he was mm -hmm. smart it could I mean the guy the, the guy is just such a smart young man and so I get what you're saying like it took a while to figure out who I am and people say that like just go figure out who you are like it's just so easy it's not that it, easy it's no not, right no, it's not that easy. yeah so tell us as you went on this journey of figure out who who Trish is and and what were some of the bumps you went into and what was the, some of the setbacks before you had the comeback well, I want to say this too. I realized we have something in common because you said your oldest is adopted. My middle daughter was adopted and we first got her at the age of seven weeks old. And it took us like three years to finally finalize the adoption. And she's now 22 and she's doing very well. So, um, yeah. So yeah, us adopted moms are awesome. But the bumps that I went through, you know, one of the hardest things for me was being able to say no. No was so hard because, you know, um, one, being the only daughter, two, at that time, both of my brothers were married. And they by the time I got old enough, they would live in their own lives. So I was kind of home. And I kind of became the person that people would go to to do stuff, go to get stuff done. If you need something done, go to church. It could be my mom. It could be any. It could be a family member. If you need something done, go to church. And so in that, I felt like that's where I lost myself as well. And I remember um, going to therapy and she was like, do you know how to tell people no? And I was like, I don't say no. And she was like, no, like say no. It's a complete sentence. You do not have to justify. You don't have to give up. You don't have to say anything. Just no. And I was like, oh, okay. And then she had me practice. She was like, for like a month, she was like, every morning I want you to stand in the mirror and say no, no. 
No, just tell yourself. And then somebody, if it's something you don't want to do, she said, say no with no explanation. No, I'm not doing that. And it was the hardest thing for me to do, but I'm so glad like I pushed through that because there were things that I didn't want to do, but I felt like I was the only one that could do it. So, you know, if I didn't do it, it wasn't going to be done right. But I had to step back and realize, you know what? If something happened to me today or tomorrow, it'll get done. So, no, I can't do that right now. So, and then that was that was one of the biggest challenges for me because I was so used to being the one to be there for everybody. And finally, I was like, I can't. I have no more energy to give. And so, no was was like the biggest thing. Okay, so we have more than just adopted children in common. We also have the fact that we couldn't say no in common because I've been there, right? And, mm -hmm. and right, you're right. No is a complete sentence. But what happens is we say yes so excitedly. We're so excited. Yes, mm -hmm. I'll help you with that, right? But we put this like this mental part in the front of our head says, oh, they're going to not like you because you're saying no. Mm -hmm. or, oh, they're going to think you're selfish because you're saying that we have all exactly, these things. And, exactly. and I had to actually take a pebble. I figured it out on my own. Like I didn't have somebody to, to guide me, you know, through all that. But I didn't have somebody like I decided I needed to do something because like you, I was saying yes to everything. And I'm sure many of our listeners listening right now can resonate with the fact that we say yes to everything, whether it's something for your children, something for your job, right. some, the neighbor, church, whatever that is, right? So I decided I have to stop this. I have to start finding time for myself and doing things that I want. So I actually took a pebble and I had to put it in my pocket and mm. I had to move that pebble three times in a day to saying no to something. So wow. then when I said yes, it meant that I really meant it. I right. really wanted to do it, right? Right. Yeah, it was hard, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. hard saying no because you so want to help. But you know what I found out, Trish? And I don't know if you if you saw this as well. But what I found out was if I said no to Trish, and maybe it was something that I did want to do, but it just wasn't the right timing, I might tell you, hey, Trish, call me back in October. If you do that again next year, reach back out to me because mm -hmm. I'll start looking at my goals and I maybe I can put on my calendar. Or right. the other thing I found was that I knew I didn't want to do it, but maybe I knew somebody that would want to say yes to it. So I either mm -hmm. was saying yes to somebody else, like introducing somebody else to that. And then I realized my saying no opened the door for that person. And had I said yes, that person wouldn't have been able to get the, the rewards of what they were waiting for. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that no, man, that thing is a hard thing to do. And I know like with my clients, when they, and I told them, I said, you know, I'm speaking from experience, just feeling overwhelmed. And I was like, why am I? And because I'm taking on things that I really didn't need to, but I was so conditioned to saying yes to every time somebody asked me to do something. And then when I finally started saying no, I could, it's almost like you could feel the weight like starting to fall off. You're like, okay, this is, it feels weird in the beginning, but it feels kind of good because now I don't feel like I have to do this. And I'm saying no. So yeah, I'm still practicing till today. I'm like, nope, I can't do that. Or I'm like you now, I'll say, you know what, I can't do it this time, but maybe somebody else I might know be able to do it. Or maybe I could do it the next time. But to, you know, no, I cannot do that. So yeah. So yeah, I know it became easier. And now it's mm -hmm. like you start realizing how much time you have to be able to do the things you want to do, which is so right. powerful. So right. what I like you to share with us is so when you work with your clients, you are sharing that you know, you like to help them seek help through their, like empower them, encourage them and inspire them through their challenges. And so tell me your, you know, you, you mentioned you're using the psychotherapy. So tell us how that journey is for somebody that comes to work with you. What kind of journey can they expect to walk through with you? Well, it's so fun. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> Excuse me. Because I work with all ages, but I kind of, it seems that I kind of gravitate to that under 21 kind of crowd. And uh, my kids always laugh. I'm like, why? I mean, it was like, because mom, you're crazy. And people love you're crazy. So it's so funny because I tell my clients, I'm like, now nah, I am I said, I'm a therapist. I said, but I'm not one of those therapists that is just going to sit here. And I'm like, yeah, so tell me how you're feeling. And this is, I said, no. I said, Miss Trish has about this much crazy. It's, and so you, it depends on you, what you want that particular day. And so they like that engagement. And I love to bring in some humor because I feel like 
life is so heavy. And if you're willing to come to therapy, I don't want to make it heavy for you because there's so much stigma in the mental health field. There's so much stigma in going to therapy, especially in the black and brown communities. There's so much stigma with this. So I want you to know, here's somebody who looks like you. Here's somebody who may have experienced some of the things that you've experienced. But guess what? It's okay to not be okay. You don't have to be okay all the time. You can say no and be okay with saying no. So I try to make things so real for them, but I also try to make it where it's not heavy because life is already heavy. So I'll bring humor. If it's um, a certain type of music they like, I'm like, let's play, let's listen to what you listen to. No, Miss Trish is so dark. And I'm like, let's just listen to it anyway. And so I try to have that approach, you know, it's a, all about our mindset and what we're thinking and trying to change that. But I also try to really relate because if you can't relate, I tell them therapy isn't just you come to see me. I have to be able to connect to you and you have to be able to connect to me. This is a relationship. And if we don't have that connection, this isn't going to work. And it works. It really works. I love that. Just a little bit this crazy. <laughs> Just this little bit. Just how much you want today? I could give you this much or you want that much. And they yeah. love it. They love but, it. And I love how you talked about like in the black and brown community, because my son being mixed race, I, you know, we struggle to find people of color for him to go to, like with, mm -hmm. with the, some of the challenges he went to. And it's, I love that you are relatable to them. Right. And then mm -hmm. also to be I, you know, I didn't realize till, you know, having our son, how much I have many friends of color all around me since I can remember, but I didn't realize how much that it's that that community looks at like your mental health. Like it's like, mm -hmm. it's like this taboo, almost like with men, we don't want to right. talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. It's okay. We, right. you know, and you know, yes, we can go to church and we can pray, but there's only so much of that that works, right? There's right. other work exactly. that has to be done. And um, and I think that's so powerful that you share that because, and then I love that you're working with the younger, like that, that age group you work with, because I feel like, and I don't know if I'm sure you're seeing this. I feel like right now that's our, our, our young adults, our young kids that, that are, mm -hmm. that are needing that. There's so much happening in their world right now between, you know, like we had another shooting at a college just recently and just right. all the things that are happening just in the world in general to have somebody that can, they can go to and be like, okay, she's a little bit crazy, but she's going to let me know I'm okay <laughs> too. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's so powerful. And so when you are working with the kids, um, like what are you, what right now are you seeing kind of, kind of the common thread right now that's happening? Um, I think, you know, since COVID it's a lot of like depression and anxiety because you know, the socialization for like two, almost three years was gone. So the kids are really struggling with like at home, doing school at home. A lot of the kids weren't doing well because they missed that one-on-one -on -one contact. And, you know, you on your laptop at home, half the time the kids either, they're not really focused because they're not in a classroom. So what I've learned is a lot of depression and anxiety. Also, a lot of times school was a, was a sanctuary for the kids. So especially if there was like, domestic violence or some kind of neglect or some kind of abuse or something in the household, school was at least a few hours to get away from all of that. Now you are you have no getaway. And so the kids that I've been working with now is just really, it's almost like um, they're dealing with the after effects of it. So what do I do with this now? What do I do with all these emotions, all these feelings? What do I do with all this now that I've been exposed to this stuff for the last two or three years? And now here I am. So Again, I just use, I mean, I do a lot of journaling with them. I have a lot of them to, because they don't know how to, they're afraid if they express what they feel to a specific person that is not going to be perceived the right way or they'll get in trouble. So we'll do a lot of letter writing. You don't, you're not going to give the person the letter. You're going to write everything. I'm like, I don't care what you, you could use all the four letter words you could figure out. Whatever you want to put in there, put it in the letter. And it's amazing how the kids were like, Mr. I've been wanting to say this for forever. And I'm like, you're writing it out. And then we go through a ritual where we will burn the letter or we'll tear it up or we'll do something, you know, just teach them like, okay, now you're going to start releasing some of that stuff. So they get it. They get it. But yeah, depression and anxiety is like the major things that they're experiencing. Yeah, because you're right. They lost all that, that social interaction, yeah. you know, all that, that being isolated and then 
you know, unfortunately, some of them, like you said, have had not great situations at home. And so right. that's that's so much heavy weight. And for a, a young child and for a young adult, that's a lot to carry be, besides mm -hmm. the weight of everything else that they're expected to do, their schoolwork and, you know, maybe work or whatever that is for them. And right. I love the letter process. I, mm -hmm. I remember I've done that a few times, you know, and mm -hmm. it's so powerful. And um, I love the one too, where we've, with our clients. And then we do this at our retreat a couple of times. We've done it already is where we write that letter to fear because mm -hmm. we're doing something like it's, mm -hmm. if we realize we all know fear is a, a liar. It's, you know, That's and great. so that false expectations appearing real kind of mm -hmm. thing. It's like we, when, so we would burn it, we'd write that letter to fear, but sometimes we even do a response to the letter to fear. I've done that mm. too. It's so powerful to walk through that. And, um, and I, you know, I'm glad you do the work that you're doing with our young adults. It's really, really important that we continue that. So tell us, Trish, what else is happening in your world with your business and how how we can support you in that as well? Well, Noel Integrated Services is my private practice. I do that part time. Um, and basically, I just I, I think my when I think about my case, so it's half and half. Well, no, two thirds are probably 18 and under. And then a third are adults probably over 40. So I get that mixture. Um, but if I always tell, I always tell individuals like, it's okay to not be okay. And I also, cause I know that there's that fear because people are worried about what other people are going to think or what other people are going to say. But my thing is, if I always tell people, if you're doing bad, people are going to talk about you. If you're doing good, people are going to talk about you. So just give them something to talk about. It's not going to impact, you know, it's not going to, they can't, what can they do? do? They can't, you know, us as adult people talk about us, but they're not paying our bills. They're not supporting us. And so I have to have a similar approach with the kids. Like your friends may talk about you, but what are they, they're not helping you do anything. So with NIS, um, basically we do, I do families, I do individuals, I do group work, I do stuff with couples and a lot of family work. Um, out of NIS birth, just breathe. And just breathe, the J is the semicolon for the mental health world, um, for those who may experience the loss of my to suicide. And that was birthed through my adopted daughter, my 22 year old, and she allows me to tell her story. Then when we transitioned from Maryland to North Carolina, in Maryland, they went to a small parochial school. So there may have been 10 kids in their class. And we went, when we got to North Carolina, they went to a public school. And, you know, I did the research and everybody's like, this is the best school, da, da, da. and she got there for the first time sixth grade, she experienced bullying. And it was awful for her. It was awful. And I would go to the administrator, administration and they wouldn't do anything. And I was like, I'm going to pull you out to school. And she's like, no, no, my, I do have some friends. It's just this group. But it was to the point where when I say Pearl, it was bad. Like she could barely make it from the bus stop to the house before she would wet herself. Um, then what happened was I got a call from the school and the school is like, we're really concerned because we think she's cutting. And I was like, what? My, do you know what I do for a living? Not my child. And so I asked her and she said, yes. And when I tell you, my heart sank. My heart sank as a professional, but my heart sank as a mom. Because I'm like, how did I not see it? How did I miss this? And I had a dear friend. She said, Trish, you're too close. She's like, your mom, she wants to protect you. She's not going to say. So as a result, we uh, she went into therapy and we worked on that. And then she started telling me, this friend is doing it and that friend is doing it. When she got to high school, it was even more that we're doing it. And I was like, well, how did you? And she said, somebody told me that when you're feeling upset or if you're anxious about something, this helps take your mind off of it. And I was like, Babe, you know, I'm like devastated, crying, like, you know, just let me know what can I do to help. So anyway, she came to me and said, Mom, I have it's too many people. Can we, can you? I said, I, I gotta be careful, their boundaries. So we created a support group. And that's where Just Breathe came from. Um, in 2021, we created that. We do one, like one in the spring and one in the fall. 
And we just let them know that you're not the only ones. You're not the only ones struggling with depression. You're not the only one with the self-harm. You're not the only ones who thought about committing suicide. This is a safe group. It's a support group. And so in addition to the mental health and addiction, I do, we do, we co-facilitate, my daughter and I, we co-facilitate the support group for Just Breathe. And that's, that's my baby right there. I love that group. So, yeah. Wow. What a story. And to take and like to find a way to pay it forward and your daughter to be like, mom, I'm not the only one. Let's, can we help? Can we do something? And, mm-hmm. and you know, it's, it, it's sad that, yeah, there's not, she's not the only one. It's sad. Right. And then, and then the, the, like the bullying, you hear so much and I, I'm hoping it's changing. I know your daughter, do- how old is your daughter now? 22. Yeah. So I'm hoping it's changing where, <laughs> You know, the administration starts looking more at the bullying because it seems like you hear that often where the parents are complaining about it and, the, and the, nobody's doing anything. And, and I think that's the tough part is when a child feels like nobody's listening to me, nobody cares, you know, and, and it's just. Or, right. I'm sorry. Well, no, I think it's not, it's either they're not doing anything or in her case, when they did do something, it was supposed to be anonymous, but the way that they handled it, they knew it was from her. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I just, she was like, I read it. You just had not said anything because now it's just making it worse because they know it's me. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I the- remember, I remember a few times with my kids, my, um, my oldest, when he, he went to school, he was in, I think in sixth grade when Barack Obama was first elected and mm-hmm. he went through a whole situation where the teacher at the school, they gave them assignment that they had to vote on something. And, and one of the ones, I think it was McCain and the first time he ran, I think it was McCain. Mm-hmm. And, he ran. and he came home and he's like, oh, I got to vote. You know, I'm like, okay. And he's talking to us about, you know, can you help me? We're like, no, no, no. This is your first lesson in voting. We're going to teach you. Mm-hmm. You're, we're not going to put our views on it. You need right. to determine what you want. And based on that, decide who you're going to vote for. So he's like, okay, okay. So he did all that, came back and gave us the assignment. And he told us he voted for McCain. We're like, okay, and t- uh, tell us why. And all we wanted to know is why. We didn't, you right. know, just, we wanted to make sure he understood what he was doing in the process. So he goes off to school and he comes back the that afternoon, the next day, within a couple of days of turning the assignment in. And he's like, I have to change my vote. I'm like, what? You don't change your vote. We don't do that. Right. We walk into the booth and we vote. We don't get to change our vote. What are you talking about? Right. Right. And basically, the teacher had said there wasn't enough people voting for Obama at the time and that all, they sent them home to change their votes. And I was like, OK, let's another lesson. First, I said, do you want me to go talk to the teacher? Because this is not the proper way that it happens. Right. In the world. You know, you did everything you're supposed to do. You did your research. You know, we didn't tell you how we vote. We didn't tell you what we thought of this person that we, we literally said you have to vote. You don't have to share who you vote with, but because it's a school assignment, you're going to share it. And he's like, no, no, no. I don't want to go to talk to the teacher because he felt like he's going to be bullied by the teacher. Mm. And I was like, that's crazy. So we told him, go do the assignment again. We gave him the same assignment. And um, he came back out and he said, I'm going to change my vote. And we're like, okay, tell us why. And he told us why. I'm like, okay. You know, unless I'm like, you know, I was very adamant. I'm like, you, we both, my husband and I, you don't, you know, this is not how it works. Right. Right. And so he went in and he got like, I think he got a B minus. I don't know what he got, but I kept asking him, do you want me? I don't want you to go because he, between the teacher and there's another bully in the, in the classroom. And this is like, he graduated high school in 2015. So this mm-hmm. is really before mm-hmm. he came forward, a lot of bullying. But I share that because, you know, we, we have this peer pressure on ourselves, right. that, you know, that we, I don't want to say anything because they're going to know it's me or, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so I'm glad that you guys have started this nonprofit. And I think it's amazing that it's, it's a resource, right? Mm-hmm. The more resources we can give to our children and our young adults, the better, right? Right. Yeah. So tell everybody how they can check out your non, it's a nonprofit, right? Well, right now we're still a support group. Okay. And I'm in, a, I'm in the process of becoming a nonprofit. So I'm okay. excited about that. Awesome. Um, but, you know, the, uh, there's always my website, NIS, it, Noel Integrated Services, nistherapy.com. Or I have a little extra little giveaway for yeah. those who send me an email and let me know that they heard us talking. My email address is T as in Trish, Noel, N O E L, at. NIS therapy. And I had the opportunity 
um, Pearl, last year was presented to me to be part of an anthology. First time, I was like, I don't have anything to talk about. And one of my friends was like, girl, you have a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> and so the book is called Healing Toxic Habits. And it's really about mindset, change your mindset, and sharing your experiences and how you overcame the experiences. So in the book, I talk about how I, how I dealt with anxiety. And, um, and you had made a comment earlier about people go to church and they pray. And I use that platform as well at church. Like, yes, we got, we have church, we have prayer, we have all that, but God also created therapists and he created medication. So sometimes we need some medication and therapy with that prayer. So I'll, the first five emails that I get, I would love to gift this to them. My chapter is talking about how I managed the anxiety. It shares about an episode that I had at a concert which resulted in me being hospitalized from the anxiety. And um, just like where I am with it today, I've learned to um, recognize the sy sy symptoms beforehand so that I know how to get myself to a, self pla a safe place if I feel it like overpowering me. And so, yeah, that's, that's I, where I am right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, like my mom and I were having this conversation this morning where I took her, my son passed away last July, my oldest one, Matthew. Mm -hmm, I remember and so I took her, she wanted to go spend some time with him. And so I took her to the graveside. I sat in the car, we we're driving back home. And I said, we were talking. She's like, well, I hope to see him again. I'm like, you will. We go to heaven. She's well, we don't always know if we're all going to heaven. I was like, well, I grew up Catholics, right? So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, well, why you, why would you say that? And she's like, well, cause you know, depending on what we do. And then she got kind of quiet. I go, oh, so if we don't go to church every Sunday, is that what you're saying? <laughs> you know, cause it, it came that close. And I said, I said, you know, and she's like, well, it's a, it's the Catholics believe it's a mortal sin. I'm like, okay. I said, well, I'm already, I'm already a two time sinner. Then I don't go to church every Sunday. I said, but I'm also, um, our youngest one came through in vitro. I said, so, mm -hmm. you know, if that's supposed to be a, a mortal sin too. I go, but I have a belief, just like what you said, God mm -hmm. brought doctors here to do certain things. That's we right. have medicine to do certain that's things. Right. We have these tools to do certain things. Exactly. So if they weren't supposed to be here, I don't believe God put those tools in their bodies because I talk about this often on the show that we're, we're made up of tools and, mm -hmm. and things that we can do. And if we don't use it for ourselves, we cheat ourselves. But if you're not putting out to the world, I couldn't have had my second son with help. I couldn't do some of the things that I do in my life today with going to doctors, getting help with therapy, all those things that like you just said. So mm -hmm. it's a combination. It's a, it's what we bring together that's so mm -hmm. powerful. And I just love that you shared that. So we're going to do a little shift here, Trish, and we're going to make okay. sure everybody knows to um, tell everybody your email again to get your book. To, uh, the email address is T, isn't Trish, Noel, N-O-E-L, at N-I-S therapy. Dot com and the book again is healing toxic habits volume two all right so you guys heard here the first five to email her you're going to get a copy of that book so i'm yes. excited for them to do that so trish now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little shift here because we all talk right. about self-care here we're all about self-care so i want to know what is it what is trish's favorite thing to do for self-care spend time with my family my family like we love being hospitable so I love like we grill out, cook and have folks to come over and just like that's my favorite thing to do. And then going to the beach. But I love having people come. I just love entertaining and just having people be happy and smiling. That's that's part of my self-care. I love that. I love the beach, too, which being here in Florida, yeah. we got beaches all around us. So, OK, so now I'm going to challenge you a little bit that. Yes. If Trish could had to do something for herself that did not involve her family. What is she doing? I am running me a hot bubble bath with the candles and the music and an adult beverage beside me and just relaxing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And I okay. do. And I make sure I make that happen. <laughs> so, yeah. And for those that are not able to watch us i have to tell you trish literally took a seat back <laughs> in her chair like she was in that bathtub but I, I mean all but having a glass of the adult beverage right next to her she was in that bathtub yeah, I, I was I, you <laughs> took me i went straight there yes you did you did yeah. so right now one of the things that we're working on in our shiro league and for those that are new to the show 
We have a weekly community of women where we get together, we support each other in joys, in lows, in all kinds of things that are happening in our life, things around our self-care, things that bring us joy and things that we need to work on and change in our lives. And it's just a great way to uplift each other. Um, mm. In the Shira League, we have um, weekly, well, once a month meditation. We have a guest speaker every month. And by the time this uh, episode is on, we will have had a guest speaker who is a sex coach. So we have all different types of folks come in for guest speaking. But in the Shira League, right, one of the things we're working on right now, Trish, is we're working on the things that bring us joy, right? Mm. So what one of the things they had to do is get their top 10. So I'm just going to ask you off the top of your head, if I ask you for three things that brings you joy, Trish, why do they bring you joy and what are they? The first thing I will say is my faith. My faith in my, my relationship to God brings me joy because when I was, Pearl, when I was in that pit during that divorce time, that's all I had. I mean, I would cry like, God, please help me. Please help me. And that was the only peace that I would get. It would never come the way I wanted it to come, but it would come. So that would be one. The other thing that brings me joy is my 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 family. Like, I love my son just turned 20. My daughter is 22. I just been married since October. Do you know we will sit in our, we, my husband and I will be in a bedroom and they will come and they would crawl in the bed with the both of us and we're in there watching movies like we we do that and so i just love my family when my oldest daughter comes she just turned 33 she'll do the same thing she'll crawl right up in the bed and well they're all we're all just sitting there eating popcorn watching a movie doing that that's the second thing that brings me joy and um the third thing hmm know about the third thing i'm I just like, I'm just at a different, I'm just enjoying life right now. I'm just where I am. I'm just, I'm like grateful because I've been struggling for so long and I'm finally like, Ooh, I'm, I'm no longer in survival mode. I'm in living life mode. And so that brings me, that sense of peace brings me joy. Even when I hit hard times, I'm still like, all right, God, this is just another bump in the road. Let's keep going. It's, I love that you said that too, because one of the things I like to do is think about life as a like a mountain, right? Like you're going up the mountain mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, we think we want to run up the mountain and get to that goal we want to get to. Right. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden we fall down the mountain so fast mm -hmm. and we forget who's with us, you know, right. our faith that's with us. We forget that. Right. But we also think forget oftentimes to enjoy what we find along the mountain route, you know, mm -hmm. to stop and have a picnic along the, the scenic right. route, you know, come off the side and, and think about like what you said, those things that bring you joy, the kids jumping in at 20 years old, still getting in yes. the bed and watching the movie, <laughs> right? Those things are just being grateful that we can open our eyes and, and see the beauty that's all around us and the things that we have open to learn instead of being tunnel vision, like really expanding yes. our, our yeah. thoughts. Right. And then, you know, once you take that scenic route, you kind of sit down, you have a picnic and you think about what has life brought me so far and right. what have I learned from it? Because now I got to start the next journey, right? So mm -hmm. you go when you finish, you start that next journey, you're walking up that mountain and you get to the top and often like, yes, we got to the mountain. And they were like, what's next? Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. how do we stop and enjoy right. that? Right. Just sit yeah. in that, sit in that joy of that achieving that goal or having a great success and, you know, finally coming through stuff in our life that's made us feel like you said survival mode all our life. Right. Right. And so to so sit and enjoy that. And then you don't have to roll down the mountain. I always say, right. We can, you know, that's something we talk about too in the Shirley is how about you take a stroll down the mountain? Why don't you grab mm -hmm. somebody and say, can you walk with me down the mountains? Cause you don't mm -hmm. fall you know, down the mountain, like the, like the storybook tells us we can walk down the mountain. And by the way, stop and have another picnic and be like, what yeah. did I learn at the top? I need to mm -hmm. bring it with me when I go hit the next exactly. goal, right? Yeah. So I, I just love that you, you shared that because it made me think about the mountain story that I always love to share. Yeah. So now and I like that, what you said about walking with the person, because that's something that I always tell my clients, you know, I can't fix your life. That is not my job to fix it. But what I am here to do is walk the journey with you. Yeah, because it's so powerful. And I love that you said that too, because oftentimes many coaches are just like, go do this, 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 and this. Right. Get right. That. No, that's not what it's about. They, right. You know, I interviewed somebody earlier. She calls herself a cheerleader. She's a cheerleader coach, mm -hmm. you know, and 
I just love that, like that having that positive energy around our clients to help them see, they already know it inside, but help them right, exactly. push it out and, and help them walk up that mountain. It's so amazing. Yeah. I love that. So now, okay. So now Trish, you have right. that brings you joy, but to enjoy the stuff that brings us joy. Sometimes we know in our life, there's things we, we create what's called a to-do list all the time, go grocery shopping, all that stuff. Right. But do we ever stop to create the not to do list? Things we have to remove from our life so that we can enjoy the things that bring us joy, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are the top three things that's on Trisha's not to do list? Not to bite off more than I can chew. <laughs> that is hard. That's where I'm still practicing my no because sometimes, you know, even like with me doing the podcast with you the last year or so, I've been doing quite a few things. I got a business coach and she's really been putting me out there. And sometimes she has to tell me first, no, you don't have to like, don't do that one this time. This time, just kind of wait and pace yourself. So um, that's one of my things, like not to do more than I have to. Another thing that I'm learning that I that should be on my not to do list is hmm, not giving up on myself. Sometimes I'm harder on myself than what I need to be, but I have I have what I call my village. My village has always, even when I was in that deep valley, my village was there. My village would pick me up when my son had an event. He needed a tie to be tied. My village was there. You know, my brother would be there to pick him up. You know, my village was my backbone. They held my arms up. And so, you know, I try, you know, I just try not to do more than what I have to do. Not, I think those are like two of the main things. And I'm learning. I'm, I'm in this process of learning. So, yeah. I love that. Having the village, you know, I have a friend named Lisa. She calls it having your balcony people. Those mm -hmm. people you can go to to lift you up, right? Because, yeah. you know, we're, sometimes we do need that lifting up. Sometimes we do yes. need the person to be like, come on, I got you. What can I do for you? You know? Right. And I think that's so important is to have that. And and also to understand, too, that sometimes that village can change. Sometimes yes. you know, people come into our lives for a season, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. So to release the, the people that are no longer serving you. I, I remember, you know, people you were talking about earlier, people are going to talk about you when it's good and people are going to talk about you when it's not good. So right. let them talk, right? right. Because right. it's that season and those boundaries yeah. around those relationships is so, so powerful. I'd that's love that you share that with us. That was good. I love what you just said about that. But that's this. I am really enjoying my time with you. This is Yay! great. This, this is awesome. So now, Trish, it's December 2023. You have worked on your joy list. You've worked on your not to do list. What has Trish accomplished this year at the end of the year? Transformation. So at the beginning of this year. You know, we stepped out in faith and we moved into our own home together. Um, Monday, I'm starting a new job that I was afraid of, but I'm doing it out of fear because it's calling me higher. Um, and so in December of 2023, I'm going to I'm going to sit back and watch this transformation in my life and just <clears throat> as I tell people, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. I'm enjoying the ride. Excuse me. I love that. You guys, if you can see, just see, she was picturing that out there. Like she's, tra that's transformation that's coming. And congratulations on the new job. That's so Thank awesome. You. Anything, I love it too, the Trish, what she said about that new position, it's going to bring her higher. Always mm -hmm. doing something that can take you to that next level is right. so, so important. And it, you know, it's just, it's something that is so powerful. And, and in our self care too, we have to, Always make sure we're taking that time to put our cape on first so that we can show up for ourselves, whether it's in a bathtub, like what Trish just said, or you're sitting on a front swing, or maybe you're going for a walk and you come across the playground and you're like, I'm going to go swing on the swing. Doesn't mean it's just for the kids. As long as you can get in there and get out, go for the swing, right? I just love that. I'm so Thanks glad you shared me. that. So now, Trish, I one of the things that I love to talk about is how we can also empower those around us to understand that when we're putting ourselves first, we're doing something for ourselves. It doesn't mean we don't love them. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that we, we're not aware of that we're taking time from them. So I also like to share things you can do with your family or your friends 
that include self-care for yourself. So do you have anything like that that you love to do with your family and friends? So I'll give you an example. I know that when my son Matthew was here, we would go and get pedicures together. Mm-hmm. And I found it was so much fun because he he had really bad toes from football. <laughs> so, so, but it was great because we would have these conversations mm-hmm. around everything from girls to football mm-hmm. to a sport, whatever, right? So what are some of the things? And the thing is, for me, I was giving myself self-care, but I was also spending time with him. Right, right? exactly. So what are some of the things you like to do? I know you talk about the kids hopping into bed and watching right. movies, but what are some of the other things you like to do that incorporate your family around self-care? Well, the one thing when I met my husband, he had never had a manicure and a pedicure. And so now... He is the one that once a month we have our spa date and he is very (laughs) persistent about this is our day. So once a month, he and I go, we get manis and patties and he loves brick oven pizza. And so we will go somewhere and have brick oven pizza. On Tuesdays um, at the movie theaters, it's family night and it's $5 nights, whatever movie. So as a family, we all go to the movie on Tuesday nights. And um, you get free popcorn and all that. And so we just pick them up. Every, every, somebody pick a movie and we just go hang out and we have a family date night at the movies. So that's the kind of stuff that we do. Those are two great examples, you guys, of things you can do with your family for self-care. Mm-hmm. And movies are always fun to go to. And yes. that was the other thing too. Like, So my oldest one, if he would tell me, hey, mom, can we go for sushi? I know he wanted to talk. And if my younger one, hey, you want to go catch a movie? I knew he wanted to talk. So it's really, right. you know, it's really powerful to have those relationships with one another. I'm glad you said that because my oldest one does that. She'll say, mom, let's go for sushi. And I, <laughs> if she says sushi, I'm like, uh-oh, something's going on. Something's like, up. Okay, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, okay. So we're going to do our cards here. Okay. And what I want to know is, first of all, tell everybody where, I know that you gave the email. Where's the best place on social media to find you? I am on Facebook. And on Facebook, my Facebook name is Patricia Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S, West, W-E-S-T. You can find me on Facebook. Awesome. Okay, so Trish has already been forewarned about our cards. So we're going to shuffle the cards, Trish, and we're going to talk about the cards you received. So you tell me when to stop. Stop. All right. So Trish's card says... Ooh, what is good about my life? <laughs> Th- that was, yeah, I got a good card. I got a good you card. <laughs> <laughs> what is good about my life? Like I shared earlier, you know, I have been in that valley for so long. And I will be honest, Pearl, like right now, my life scares me. It scares me, but like in a good way, because it's like, it's every time I turn on, there's something good happening. And it's like one good thing to another. And even though in the midst of, you know, those punches that you get from life, the punches don't aren't don't last as long. The pain doesn't last as long for the punch. So I'm rebounding quicker from the punch. So it's been good to see that. And it's been good to see how holding on to my faith has got me to where I am. And like I'm just getting this abundance of blessings. And it's, have, it's not even stuff I'm even asking for. I'm like getting these extra kisses. And I'm like, you know, I'm just I'm just in awe of where my life is right now. And it scares me. But I'm going for the ride. I'm not hitting the brakes. I'm just like, I'm just going to keep riding. Because, you know, people keep saying, you deserve it. And so I'm learning to tell myself, it's okay. You deserve it. You deserve it. Isn't it interesting how our minds can play that game of everything's going so good. What's going to happen? Like you kind of right, like around the right. corner, right? And we, mm-hmm. we we struggle with that because we've been, you know, and many times in our lives, we grow up with challenges. We're always like, oh, it's good. It means I got to have a price, right? Like every, so right. that mindset of changing that, that I deserve everything, you know, that's coming and these kisses. And I love how you call them kisses, kisses that come my way. I think that's just such a beautiful example and and so I have a question for you. Do you have an affirmation, Trish, that you say to yourself or did you use regularly? Uh, well, I'm, it's, it, it changes depending on, like you said, about your seasons. And so 
I've always kind of struggled with, um, not kind of, I've always struggled with imposter syndrome. And uh, so now I just tell myself, you are worthy, you are enough, and you can do this. And so that's what I tell myself all the time. And I tell my kids that you are worthy, you are enough, and you can do this. I love that. You are worthy, you're enough, and you can do this. Those are mm-hmm. three powerful things to say to yourself. And mm-hmm. you know, for the listeners, it's really important to have those affirmations. When you see right. behind my wall, I've got, you know, you're mm-hmm. awesome, self-love, all those things, you know, make today amazing, dream big. It's mm-hmm. because for me, when I walk in here, I want to feel that I want to feel what I'm thinking. Right. I want to be inspired with, with what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And so it's just such a great reminder to us that to remember we are worthy, you know, and that that's so powerful to know that and to say those things. I, mine is I get up every morning and I say, I am beautifully and wonderfully made good, mm-hmm. better, and different. Anything that comes my way, there is a lesson learning from it because I, I know, you know, I think sometimes people think affirmations are a, a way to just make everything positive in the world. Like if I have an affirmation, nothing's going to go wrong. Yeah. And I just want to tell everybody that that's not the case. Things are going to mm-hmm. happen. Mm-hmm. But it's that mindset, it's that, you know, that saboteur, that judge that shows up, which I call her Betsy. If Betsy shows up, like, yeah, no, we're not talking today, Betsy. You right. need to take a right. little nap, right? And I think it's powerful that if we remember that life's not going to be perfect, but how we respond to it, like what you did with your daughter, starting a, starting a support group for others that are going through the same type of journey or similar to what she's done, mm-hmm. you know, however you can pay it forward right so exactly. powerful in this world i love that you guys are doing that and yes, i love your you. affirmation um thank i can't you. believe we are i mean we're at the end you guys <laughs> we've, we've had all, almost an hour of fun time together and so for those that are listening we're definitely going to share all trisha's information remember to email her we'll put that as well out there so you can get her free book yes. but i also want to remind everybody that um you know we have our Shiro League. You heard me talk about it today and you hear me talk about it often. And the Shiro League really is a community of women. And Trish, you're more than welcome to join us at one time if you like. Okay. But it's really about getting together with like-minded women that, you know, talk about the things we talked about today that want support in going after their goals and keeping on finding joy in their life, no matter what comes around the corner for us. And so if you're interested in joining and visiting us one time for the Shiro League, come and join us. All you have to do is email hello at wsliving.com that's hello at wsliving.com and what you can do is just put in the subject matter shiro and we'll make sure you get the information we meet sunday evenings eight to nine eastern time there is no requirement for makeup you can wear no makeup you can be Mm -hmm. in your pjs as long as you have clothes on and just join us for for either meditation a guest uh, speaker to come in or just be surrounded by community women who are walking the same path as you are and just want to be supported by one another. So I just want to remind everybody as we come to the end of our show today that we come into this world as this rough little oyster on the outside. We have a lot of work to do to open up our shell. But as you open your shell, you find your inner pearl of greatness. And I hope each and every one of you go out today with some of the words we shared with Trish and find your inner pearl of greatness. Have an amazing day. Shine, good to 